Hi, this is Ishmael. Every day I use my phone to collect voicemails about the books people love, but today I'll use it to call a person or an organization. They'll answer the three most interesting questions in the world, but first they'll issue an all call challenge. I hope they answer my call, and I hope you answer theirs. Hello? Hi, is Maria there, please? This is she. Hi, Maria. It's Ishmael from Call Me Ishmael. How's it going? Hi, Ishmael. How are you? I'm just fine. Thank you for joining me for this call. You are the creator of one of the most bookish corners of the entire internet, brainpickings.org. Your work inspires millions of bibliophiles. So what would you like to challenge viewers and listeners to call in about? I would like for people to call and tell us about what book changed your perception of reality in a fundamental way. Maria, people are hearing and reading the challenge right now. Do you have any predictions or directions about interpreting the challenge? Sure. I mean, the first is just the caveat that, of course, every book, or at least every good book, changes our perception of the world in some way. But I'm asking specifically about perception, not just understanding, and reality as sort of this cluster of assumptions that we have about how the world works beyond and independently of our inner worlds and of the creations of our own minds. And so this could be anything from, you know, astrophysics and the theories of multiverses to philosophy, to Zen Buddhism, to even something like Alice in Wonderland, all of which challenge those basic assumptions that we live with. The idea, folks, is to call in with a story about a book that interprets this prompt. So, Maria, I'm going to glean some book recs from you with the three most interesting questions in the world in a moment. But first, <laughs> I'd love to ask you, how do you, the brain picker, pick what you pick? Well, I should first say that brain pickings is really just a record of my becoming as a person, you know, spiritually, intellectually, creatively. I am a reader and a writer in that order, so I write about what I read, and um, the ideas I explore come from art, science, philosophy, design, psychology, and a lot more things, but mostly I'm interested in how these different ideas from various fields and disciplines and eras and sensibilities um, illuminate and enrich one another and in the process maybe help us answer or help me answer that grand question of what it means to live a good life, uh, a meaningful life. And I think that sense of cross-pollination comes across so clearly in everything that you do. The three most interesting questions in the world. Maria, what book are you reading right now? <laughs> well, I'm reading a number of books, but I will tell you about one, Mrs. Dalloway. Strangely enough, I first fell in love with Virginia Woolf's writing through her nonfiction and her diaries, not her fiction, which is what she's best known for. So I always harbored this intense guilt about not having read much of the fiction that she is so celebrated for, with the exception of To the Lighthouse and Orlando, both of which I loved. What book do you recommend more than any other and why? Rebecca Solnit's A Field Guide to Getting Lost. It is such a profound and lyrical meditation on on how we find ourselves in, in every sense. She writes with such great fire and precision the combination of which is really quite extraordinary and enchanting. Some people who have called me are certainly listening to this right now. Do you have any favorite Call Me Ishmael entries? <laughs> yes. Joe Hansen's call about Rachel Sussman's The Oldest Living Things in the World. I feel like we need to protest against forgetting. That's what Rachel Sussman's The Oldest Living Things in the World does for me. When I see a photo of a 13,000-year-old tree and read its story, it's like I'm tapping into deep time and my tiny life gets to experience something so big. Culturally, it is such an important book. But the reason I love this call personally is that Rachel is also a dear friend and I have been alongside her for much of this decade-long labor of love. And so a few months ago, I introduced her work to Joe, and it's been so wonderful to see 
that it resonates so deeply with him, as deeply as his call to speak. It certainly was an incredibly refreshing voicemail. Maria, thank you for co-hosting this All Call Challenge. Readers, the challenge is issued. Call me and tell us a story about a book that changed your perception of reality in a fundamental way. You might check brainpickings.org for inspiration. And I'd like to end it with the first sentence of one of the essays in the book that Maria recommends most. And it's, the world is blue at its edges and in its depths. Rebecca Solnit, a field guide to getting lost. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Ishmael. <laughs>